Well, I know why you're here. You're probably here today because you have leaks here at your washing machine water shutoff valves. Well, in today's video, folks, we are going to show you, DIYers out there, how you can do this yourself, how you can install a brand new water shutoff valve here for your washing machine. We're going to show you how to melt the solder here and get this off of here. We're actually going to show you two methods. One method will be to melt the solder and pull it off. The other method will, will be to just simply cut the pipe behind the valve so that you don't even have to do anything and mess with a torch in case you don't have one. And then we're going to show you how to put it on. Uh, the new one here, the new water valve here will be a compression fitting like this. So you won't even have to do any type of soldering whatsoever. And all of that starts right now. Jeff here and welcome back to the channel where we give you world-class videos on remodeling your kitchens, your bathrooms, all sorts of repairs around the house, tool reviews and engineering disasters and today we're dealing with an engineering disaster. But if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below right now while it's fresh in your memory and then when you do that, make sure you click on the little gray bell icon right next to it. That way you'll be alerted every single time we upload a new video. So the first thing we have to do before we do any anything at all here for safety purposes. Remember what this is right here. This is about 60 PSI of running water. And so what we have to do here is we got to cut off that mean water outside first. Otherwise, if you don't, just imagine a hose going off inside your house because that's what this is. This is the pressure of a, of a hose bib right here. So let's go ahead and shut that water off right now. All right, so here's the main cutoff here. completed step one, we've turned off the water outside, we've disconnected the hoses. Now step two is you want to open these up both all the way full and let all the water drain out of here because if there's any running water at all, even these drips right here, you will not be able to melt the solder enough in here for this thing to come loose when you go to torch it. Okay, so we were called over here to our friend's house here to change these hoses here for their washing machine. So we put on the new hoses and we turned on the valves again and once we turned on these valves we realized that they're dripping water and this is a very common failure. So the seal in here is is worn out. You know this is the original valve as put on here by the builder in 1981. So this is pretty old and this is a, a very very common failure mode. So what happens is these valves basically sit open all year round, right? So now the one time you come in to turn it off so that you can put the new hoses on, when you turn it back on you'll see sometimes it's because of the seals inside have worn down, they, they dry and they crack over time and it's just time to uh, get, a, get a new valve. A lot of people will just loosen the nut here and take everything apart and put in a new gasket and that's fine. We're choosing the much better out of making everything look brand spanking new because this house is going to be sold and even if you're not selling the house, if you're just going to remodel it and want everything to look nice, why not spend the extra $10 to get a new valve here and just put it on there. That way you don't have to worry about it ever again. So we'll just wait here until the water shutoff valve here completes its Austin Powers impression. So what we'll do is we'll make this one the one that we cut off with the tubing. So I'll use my uh, auto cut here and the auto cut will, will snap on the, the tube behind it here and we'll have to take this flange off. We'll have to cut the flange off first in order to get this behind there to be able to cut our copper pipe. There we go. Okay, so the way this works is it shows the arrow going counterclockwise here, but when you have the, the lettering facing you, it's going to be clockwise. So what you do is you snap it on there around the tube and tighten it up there and just start spinning it there, see? And you just turn it around a few times until it breaks completely off. Do not break it off by hand. Don't try to snap the pipe off. Just let it cut all the way through. See? So now we're completely off. 
Okay, now in my past videos dealing with plumbing and cutting copper pipe, you remember we talked about whenever you cut a copper pipe here, it leaves this kind of a ridge that you can feel around in here. Okay, so you have to ream all that. You have to get a reaming tool. There are different types of reaming tools that you can use here on this copper pipe. And the mistake that I see a lot of people make is they only ream the inside, but not the outside. So that's why I always use this tool. That way I'm guaranteed I can do both sides with it. So it's this pointed side here, it goes inside the pipe and you just turn it around a few times until it cleans it all out there. And then you flip it over and this goes on the outside of the pipe. So now we're going to do the outside. Now I always like to take a little piece of emery cloth sandpaper here and I sand down the pipe here all the way around or you can use a regular pipe cleaner uh, tool as well. But the idea is to get it nice and smooth and clean and shiny copper hair and everything and all fresh and ready uh, to take your new compression fitting on there. Now some people also prefer to use Scotch-Brite and what Scotch-Brite is that's that green stuff here that's on the back side of these Scotch-Brite sponges but the people that use it typically will buy the green stuff without the sponge so you could also use that it's about the same grit as the sandpaper here. Okay so I'm just taking the emery cloth and I just go around and gently sand all the way around try to get it nice and polished. Okay, so you can see now our pipe is nice and shiny and it's ready to receive a new valve on it. So normally we would put this metal flange on first, but unfortunately there's not enough room left on that pipe for us to get that on there and this. So what we're going to have to do is we'll put the compression fitting on first and then we have to come back with one of those plastic ones that splits and we'll put it, insert it behind it instead. Okay, so we'll put the nut on first, then we'll put the ferrule on, right there. So one thing I always like to do here before I go ahead and insert the water shutoff valve onto the pipe is I'll take a little bit of silicone grease, this is plumber silicone grease, and I'll just run a bead of it around there and I'll take it and I'll smooth it around the threads there with my finger. What this does is this just helps lubricate the threads. It makes it easier for you to make the compression tighter on there and it offers just a teeny bit of a seal there in between the threads. So now we'll just take the valve and insert it into the pipe there and we'll start threading it in as much as I can do with my fingers until it's ready to tighten with the wrenches. Okay, so now the way we tighten this is I normally like to use my rigid one-stop wrench. I love this wrench because it's really two wrenches in one. The smaller one unscrews out of it. And I'll, again, I'll put a link to this down in the description with all the other stuff. And this wrench will fit right on that part of the body right there. So we can hold it steady while we tighten this one. And we can tighten this one with either another adjustable wrench here like this. So this one would wrench right here and then my rigid wrench the one stop wrench will hold the housing steady like here, like that. So the only problem is, so normally I keep two of these in my bag and I'll tell you why, because normally when I do water cutoff valves, one wrench fits on this one, the other rigid, rigid wrench fits on here. This manufacturer, for whatever dumb reason, decided to make this nut slightly bigger so it doesn't work with the rigid wrench, in which my wrench here this rigid one-stop wrench is a standard size that fits every other angle stop in the world. So see, for example, here's an, an angle stop that I normally use for under your vanity, you know, or for your toilet supply, right? And then you can see the rigid wrench here fits perfectly over that back nut. So why did this manufacturer have to be different than anybody, everybody else? Who knows? So here's how we have to deal with it. Or if you need a little bit more moment arm leverage on that rear nut, we can use these channel locks, which have a longer arm on them, which might give us more ability to wrench it nice and tight and compress that furrow sleeve down. Okay, so that's how you install a compression water shutoff valve here. And you see the trickle comes back because I've turned on the valve. 
and I could shut it off at will now. Okay, turning our attention now to the water shut off valve here for the hot water. This is the one that we are going to sweat off with the torch. So we're going to heat it with the torch to melt the solder and then this should slide right off the pipe. Now since we're operating next to drywall here, I'm using my um, plumber's heat shield here and hopefully we can get this to fit all around there. And see, so now we're going to protect our wall from the heat from the torch. Let me give us the a little more length going that way because I think we're going to be shooting our flame sideways towards the right like this. Okay, whenever we're using a torch and, and melting solder and working with copper pipes like that, we always, uh, I'm just using my little map gas tank here with the little torch tip here. When we do this, we always make sure you use safety. You know, you wear gloves, okay? And you want to make sure that you have your fire extinguisher close by, and you always wear eye protection while doing this because you never know what will splash up at your eyes at God knows what temperature. Okay, so when we start it up here, we're going to be aiming it like this. We're going to be applying the heat right here at the fitting closest to where the, the pipe is and we'll just keep pulling on it with the channel locks here hoping to just pull it right off of the pipe okay so here we go so we're just going to heat this guy up here and we'll see how long it takes before we can start to move it here try to do it from underneath to heat it so that the hot air rises And there she is. Okay, and I don't hear any fire engines, so I guess we didn't burn down the house. Okay, so here's the thing too. Even though we didn't cut this particular pipe, but because there was some solder meltage there, and I don't know really how good a job the previous plumber did when they built this place, and I know how the builders use really untalented plumbers down here in Florida. So I'm going to take my reamer and just ream the inside and outside, and it will make it easier for us to put our ferrule sleeve around that pipe now, too. It'll give it a, a entryway. So we'll chamfer the outside edge of this pipe here. See, move all of these guys in, and now it's kind of a, more at a, at a little bit of an angle that leads into it. That'll help our sleeve fit over there better. Okay, so just like the cold water one, we're going to wait before we put the flange on there. We'll put it on afterwards. Okay, so we've got the nut on there first. See if we can't get the ferrule to fit on there. Hey, good, he went on there good. Always a good day when the ferrule goes on. The second verse, same as the first. You know the drill by now. We're putting more silicone grease on this one as well. And just rub it into all the threads there. Okay, so both water shutoff valves are installed now. And before we turn the water back on outside, we want to make sure that both of these are turned off right now. Because you don't want to go outside, turn on the water, and then gush. So make sure these are both tightened down and turned off right now. Okay, now before you go outside to turn the main water back on, you have to do this step, otherwise you're going to drive yourself absolutely crazy. You take a dry cloth, a nice dry cloth, wipe everything down here so that it's completely, totally dry, right? All the way around, go very thoroughly, get in all the nooks and crannies. You don't want to see one single drop of water. Run your fingers all around it, make sure you don't feel anything there, right? All the way around, you, your hand cannot come back with a single drop of water, right? All the way around. 
okay? That way you know that there's no water here right now because when you go outside and turn on that water, if there's any kind of leak somewhere, you want to make sure, you, oh, I felt water. Is that old water from before the leak or after, after I installed it? You know, you'll drive yourself crazy. So this way here, we're starting from a known position of completely dry. Okay, so let's test it out here. There it is. So you want you want to let it run a little bit here before you put the hoses on because you want to make sure that all the sediments and stuff are out of the pipe. Okay, so we have all of our hoses connected back up here now. And uh, a true test to make sure that all of your connections here are correct is to just you know, go ahead and turn the water on. When I turn this valve on, you'll feel the pressure go into the hoses here. And then you shouldn't hear anything else or see anything else. Same with the cold water. See how the you saw the hose buckle a bit there? And then you can just open up the valve and make sure that there's no drips here. And again, take your cloth, because we just tested it and splashed some water here and there. Take your cloth and wipe everything down. Make sure everything's nice and dry, okay? And just because we did all this doesn't mean you're out of the water yet, okay? Get it? <laughs> Literally. Okay, so you see all this water we have on the floor there. We want to just wipe this up now and let it dry overnight. And when we check in the morning, we want to make sure there's not a single drop of water anywhere on there. Because that's how you'll know if you have a problem. You may not be able to see anything now, but if there is a leak and it's a slow leak, it will happen overnight and water will drip and drip and drip overnight. So we want to come back in the morning and check that and make sure that there, this is perfectly dry with no drops of water on it. Okay, so. If you remember on the cold water side, we discovered that we couldn't put the flange on first because there would not have been enough distance. So that's why I told you we had to go and get this type here. This is the flat type. These are plastic and they, they break right along the seam here so that you can put them on behind the, the nut after the fact. Here, so let me show you what it does here. You just go like this, you bend it right there and it snaps right there. So this enables you to put this right over the pipe there even after you've already put the shut off valve onto the pipe. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, now let me show you something that I don't like here. See how this is, pipe is all wiggling and everything? I hate when I see this, and this happens like almost 100% of the time down here in Florida. The plumbers, when they originally did the rough and plumbing in the houses, they never tie down the pipe so that they don't you know, they don't move around like this. They're supposed to strap them to a piece of wood in there and they, and they just simply don't. I don't know if it's laziness or ignorance or a combination of the two, but I'm going to fill this in with my PL adhesive first. And when I, do, I usually do this, I just gush it in there, right? And by the next morning, that'll be rock solid. That won't even be moving anywhere. And I'll leave a little on here you can, you can do this with caulk too, but PL adhesive is best to fill in that big gap. If you don't have that problem, then just use a little bit of caulk on that back wall right here to put the plate on there. And here's our two flanges installed here on the back there with our two water shut off valves. So normally the plumbers give you enough stub out of the copper pipe that comes out of the wall there that you don't normally have this problem. We only run into this like once every couple of years. But it was good, it was a good learning experience here to show you this. Well, I certainly hope you're finding this video useful so far. And if you are, hey, do us a favor, please. Go ahead and click on the thumbs up button down below there. That lets us know that you like us. And it also helps YouTube rank us better as well. And if you want to up your game and learn much better how to do really high class remodeling in your house and repairs around your house make sure you click on that subscribe button down below and make sure also that you click the little gray bell icon next to it that way you'll be alerted every time we upload a whole new video because you don't want to miss any of our videos and uh, that's where we'll leave it for this week folks thank you so much for tuning in we appreciate each and every one of you being here today and we'll see you on the next one